As Nigeria's COVID-19 numbers rise, 195 cases in one day. And also, the House of Representatives has moved a motion seeking to investigate the validity of every Chinese national in Nigeria. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Barely two days after President Mahmoud Buhari approved a phased and gradual easing of the lockdown in the FCT, Lagos and Ogun State, the NCDC figures last night shows the highest number of confirmed cases as it records 195 cases in one day. The question is, is the easing of the lockdown a good idea? And joining us to have a conversation in this is a political technocrat, Dio Kayode, live in the studio. Thank you, Mr. Dio, for joining us on Plus Politics. My pleasure, Benny. How and are also, you today? thank you very much. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And also via Skype, we have the president of the Nigerian Medical Association via Skype, Mr. Francis Fadjiyile. Mr. Francis, thank you for joining us also. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. And how are you doing this evening, Mr. Francis? I'm good. Are you? I'm doing great and staying safe. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you. According to the NCDC, sir, Nigeria has recorded 195 new cases of COVID-19. Now that brings the total number to 1,532. This is the highest ever recorded in a day since the outbreak of the pandemic in the country. Help us appreciate the situation based on this, sir. Thank you very much. What has happened is... Uh, the direct aftermath of having better uh, or more uh, investigation or testing in place. Uh, we have uh, complained severally that the number of Nigerians being tested for COVID-19 has been very, very low. And uh, now that uh, they are opening up more laboratories, uh, we will certainly be seeing higher figures, which is actually going to be a reflection of the situation in the different communities. Now, let's talk about contact tracing. Now, you, you say it's because of improved testing. Now, we do know that some over the weekend, the NCDC still complain about lack of sufficient testing kits. Um, how much of contact tracing uh, have, would, you, would you say we're, we're engaged in right now? And possibly the reason for the increase in numbers? I think the increasing numbers is largely because of, uh, number one, uh, increasing community tracing, uh, community um, transmission that is occurring. Uh, for some weeks and for some days, we have been saying that the effect of uh, this non-testing uh, will be seen. Uh, a lot of Nigerians who have caught, uh, contracted that disease because a large number of Nigerians who have uh, had contact with those who are positive. And unfortunately for us, we have had an additional, an additional densely populated state to uh, be in the map of COVID-19 uh, infection and that is Kano State. And uh, even at that high level that we had yesterday, Kano State was still about uh, uh, for 35, which we believe is still grossly uh, under-recorded. And uh, I, I think Nigeria is really in for it because we must be able to do a rapid testing so that we can quickly see the uh, the, the depth of this disease within the country. I'm just going to take your own uh, reaction here in the live studio. I mean, in, in any reaction to what Mr. Francis Fadjuile just said? Yeah, yeah it, uh, it's okay what me, uh, Mr. Francis had just said because uh, either we like it or not, along the line, we were not really prepared and our rate of reaction to the pandemic was just too slow, to the extent that we were not even having adequate testing before. And if you now see some other countries, they are doing all this testing and all that free of charge. But you can see some people charging fees here. I, I, was, I was a particular somebody on, a, on one platform, I think last week, who said that they were charging him 
30,000. And uh, he, was, he was even embarrassed. And mark you, if you look at the tax force, they were saying something like this yesterday that the testing is about, is about $2. And they were now talking about that same 30, 36,000. But they're now, they're now talking about who bears the brunt of that testing. If, if you are asking somebody who lives in Okeodo, who lives in Agege, who lives in Ajegule, or you are asking a organizer who has not even been able to feed his family to come and pay 30000 for such a test, do you think such a person will go? But at the end of the day, who still bears the brunt? The whole environment. Now, this thing has now gone into the streets. It has gone into the neighborhood. It's not that you say you want to trace about 40 people or 60 people. No. It's about capturing everybody within the country and then test them. But we can still go beyond even testing and talk about prevention. Look at what happened in Madagascar to the president of Madagascar. They, 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 they looked inwards and they came up with a particular drug. And this, the president, the, that young president, went on air, live on air. He took it and he said, oh, yeah, everybody, free of charge. He ordered mass production of that particular uh, uh, drug and they started taking it. And mark you, he now said, even this particular drug is not just for uh, or treatment, but for prevention. This is an African produced drug. All right. So, why can't we now? Like as Nigerians, look inwards. In in University of Ibadan, they brought out a particular leave a few days ago. All Mr. you need Cowley, to do is Mr. take Cowley, it as tea, right? You're going ahead of the show. Just hold your thoughts there. We're going to come to this part during the show. Let me sit talk with Mr. Francis. Now, till date, 1,532 cases have been confirmed, with 255 cases which have been discharged, and 44 deaths have been recorded in 33 states and the Federal Capital Territory. As president of the enemy, are, are you in support of the president's approved phased and gradual easing of the lockdown in the light of all of these increasing numbers? Well, if you have been following what uh, the stand of Nigerian Medical Association, we have consistently said that it is not the right time to ease the lockdown when you are having increasing number of patients having uh, uh, contracting the disease, the COVID-19 infection. Uh, when you start easing any lockdown, is actually when you have got into the peak and you are descending the slope. But the Nigeria experience that we are seeing, uh, however difficult it may look like, uh, looks as if the federal government wants to open up the economy and uh, see how well they can uh, support uh, the economy so that uh, the, whole, uh, the whole economy will not crash. But if you are talking about science and clinical uh, 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 experience or clinical support, it is not yet time for us to say it is time for us to ease out the lockdown. But why have we not been able to get the best with the lockdown in the last two, three weeks? Uh, some people had come out that we have not uh, got uh, a good response. But I said uh, it is not true because we do not have the opportunity of seeing the other side if we had not uh, been on lockdown. And again, it is also important for us to know that the lockdown has had a lot of uh, needed to have with the lockdown, contact tracing, as well as uh, uh, massive uh, testing. Unfortunately, we could not match the lockdown with this rapid testing that we needed. And sincerely, if people are saying we didn't have the best benefit of the lockdown, we may not be able to say that they are not totally wrong. But it is not still yet a good time for us to do the easing of the lockdown as it were. And however, if you want me to comment on the issue of Madagascar, uh, although it's not directly sent to me, I don't know if I can uh, give someone or two thoughts over that.
to the show before we let you up this evening. We're going to come to that. Yes, I just want Mr. Kaudo to react to a few things you've said now, I mean. Yeah, you see, the issue of uh, slowing down the lockdown, yes. I see it as a stylish abdication of responsibilities. You think that's what it is, an abdication of responsibilities? That's the way I not think. That's the way I see it. Because right now, right now, we have not been able to capture one over 20 of the people having this thing. The law that is supposed to still be there, but, 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 with a way of giving people, early, uh, uh, early, uh, elevating people's sufferings, all right, in terms of, look at a organizer that cannot feed itself except it goes out in the morning. Look at the downfall drivers. Look at the conductors. Look at uh, all these uh, repairers, mechanics, and all that. How do you want them to feed? But, so, but it's in consideration of all of this, your concerns, that the, the president finally decided, you know, let's have a phase, no, is locked what down. Is, what was I supposed to do is this. Look at uh, how much... Look at, uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. Let them give comprehensive... I was calling some people on my, on my street yesterday. They said, even if it is 20,000, even if it is 10,000, let them give to some people. Do you understand? By the time you give them this money, they know that, yes, government is taking care of them, government recognizes their existence, and government is taking care of their social, is doing their own social responsibility. All right? But now that they don't have anything to do, they prefer to gamble with their life than to stay at home and die. So if only government can do that, honestly speaking, everybody will be ready to stay at home. Mr. Francis, the, the NCDC has stated that it hopes to test 2 million people in the next three months. If they meet this goal, do, do you see the number of cases being confirmed increasing even more? Bearing in mind that during the president's, the president's address on Monday, he did say categorically that they've commissioned, um, the NCDC has accredited 15 laboratories across the country to carry out 2,500 tests daily. And I would think that's pretty much a small number. I need your, your reaction to this. I think we need to be more factual in what we do. And we need to know that we are in an emergency situation. And we need all hands on deck to see that we are able to contain this rampaging uh, uh, viral in, uh, disease as soon as possible. Uh, why am I saying this? If we are waiting for uh, a, a promise of getting 50,000 every day and 3 million, 3 months, and uh, you do not have a way of uh, doing proper contact tracing, getting all those people within uh, the community to get them tested, to, iso to take out those who are positive so that they do not infect more uh, person, and to be able to treat those who may be sick and to get the asymptomatic uh, carriers. It may be a, just a wish. And uh, the logistics that uh, you have to pass through for you to get through the molecular testing uh, to us look so much that it may hamper this beautiful idea the DG of NCDC is trying to uh, present to Nigeria. We need rapid diagnosis testing that can be done anywhere you are. You don't need to move to anywhere. You don't need to give a call to anybody. You can always do it, and within a few minutes, you will get your results. And once you get your results, if you are positive, then you can be sent to go and do this confirmatory test that may take some days. This one will take away the stigmatization. Now we have a lot of people who are sick, who have febrile illness, but the logistics for you to, to call, for them to come and take your sample, everybody knows that they are taking your sample, and if you are positive, they will bring an ambulance and they will evacuate you. You'll be uh, a, a, someone that everybody will know something is wrong with you. These are the issues that we are facing and a lot of people who are having query COVID-19 are not very willing to just come out and get tested. So we need to have a middle way approach in such a way that you have rapid diagnosis tests 
that anybody can do, and you can, you can do it even across all the primary health care centers or any health care centers around you. And if you are positive, you just move and get your test, uh, your confirmatory test done wherever you could be. No. I think that is the way to go. Unfortunately, the NCDC is not looking at that way. It's sticking to what the WHO has said, that it is only the, P, uh, the PCR, the molecular testing, that is uh, the ideal, which we are not arguing with, although it has its own, uh, uh, um, it, 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 it's, its own uh, false positives, because it can only pick up to 80% of uh, cases. So we must be able to find a homegrown way of settling this disease. We should not forget, Nigeria is a country with over 200 million. If anything happens within the country, and we do not control it as soon as possible, we may be having a very big issue in our hands. Mr. Francis, I want to, I want to bring you back to something you said some time ago on the show. Um, when some hospitals, some private hospitals were listed, as not being qualified to carry out testing and treatment for COVID-19 patients. I did ask you categorically if there was no means at this point for us to have, you know, a federal government private sector partnership. You and I will agree, many Nigerians will agree that we're actually under testing right now, maybe due to basic facilities and testing kits and all of that. Don't you think there should be a place right now for collaborative effort between the federal government, um, the public sector and the private sector, just to make sure we have more testings being done? Well, the, the molecular testing needs a lot of uh, very expensive equipment, and uh, it needs a lot of expertise to be able to operate it. The rapid testing kits can be done by anybody, in as much as you follow how the, how the, uh, the manufacturer has directed. It's so simple, and the result can come out very, very uh, quick. So that one can be done anywhere. Secondly, I can tell you for a fact that most private hospitals are not going out of their ways to start treating COVID-19 patients. But you should know that uh, up to 60 to 70 percent, between 60 to 70 percent of Nigeria patients patronize uh, the private uh, health institutions. So it then means that COVID-19 patients will certainly visit some of these private health institutions. And the, 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 the presentation of that infection is like malaria, like typhoid, or like any other febrile illnesses that we have in this part of the world. So it is not as if many of them want to treat. But if they want to treat, it is not only the expertise of the medical personnel that is needed for you to treat COVID-19. And this is because COVID-19 is a highly con uh, infectious disease. We need to have some admi more administrative control, more engineering control, and a lot of controls that must be instituted. The way you dispose your, your, your the, the, uh, the, the, you do the disposal in the hospital must change. And it is very stringent and difficult for many of the private hospitals to get to that extent. Okay. And even if you get to that extent, it does not add commensurate amount of funding or payment on patients who are COVID-19 positive. So in exactly. as much as they may want to start treating COVID-19, but the long-term effect is that they will get themselves infected, they will get other patients who have come around infected, they will get their staff infected, and the rippling effect is that the staff will go to their different houses, different abodes, and spread the disease. This is one of the major experiences that we got from the Italian uh, COVID-19 outbreak. When they were treating COVID-19 positive patients in the same hospital with other patients. So we need to be careful uh, before we say we can allow private health institutions to treat COVID-19. However, uh, unknowingly to them, they may have one or two COVID-19 patients coming to their facilities, and this is also dangerous for everybody uh, around that area at that time. So, Mr. Francis, I want to take you on something you just said about, you know, 
them contracting the, the virus um, by not being careful. But even with how controlled it has been by the NCDC, Nigeria's health minister, Osage Haniwe, on April 23, said more than 40 health workers are tested positive for coronavirus. Um, at, and this happened at, at different times. And the figures at that time, the figures um, represented roughly 4.6% of the country's then 873 confirmed cases. I would like, what could be the problem here and why is this happening? Even still with the so much controlled condition, you think these testings are being carried out. We have about 40 health personnel contracting this virus. Well, this is where the problem is. Many of those who contacted, all of those who contacted the virus were not doctors or health workers who are at the isolation or the treated, treatment centers. Because those are the places in which those who have been confirmed positive are treated. Those health workers at those places are well trained, they are well kitted, they put on the normal and necessary uh, PPE, and they guide themselves from being infected. But the problem we have at our different hospitals, where we, we sit down, you have a doctor who sits down, and he sees a woman in labor, and the woman needed to do a cesarean section. And the doctor and the workers in that hospital decides to do that to save the life of the baby and the woman. And at the end of the surgery, they found out that the patient was COVID-19 positive. At that time, the doctors had had direct contact, contact with the patient, the nurse, the theater nurse, the nurses who have been taking care, the cleaners, and everybody, as well as those who are staying in the same world with such patients. And this is the area that all health workers that have uh, contracted the COVID-19 got, got them from. Okay. So what we are saying is that every potential patient coming to the hospital today is a COVID-19 patient. We need to have the uh, high index of suspicion. Every health worker needs to uh, put on the necessary uh, personal, personal protective equipment before you see any patient. If ordinary patient who has hypertension may be harboring COVID-19, and while you are treating, uh, thinking you are treating hypertension, you may also contract the uh, COVID-19 from that Francis, patient. Just, just so hold, hold your thoughts there for the a moment. Animal, just, uh, just hold your thoughts uh, there for a moment, Mr. Francis. Let me, let me take some reaction from Mr. Kyle here in the live okay. studio. I mean, I know you have a lot that you want to say and counter with what um, Mr. Fadouille yeah. has been saying. Yes. Yeah, you see, starting from where the health minister was saying that they want to test uh, 4 million Nigerians or whatever, where are the facilities? to test these people? Where are the professionals? But the issue is this. The professionals are there. The air facility people are there. The human, human resource that we need, they are there. But they don't know how to annex them. Number one, the retired medical personnel, they can bring them back. Those in the final year in uh, medical schools, do you understand? Because those people have done their clinicals and all that, they can bring them back. Those in the uh, uh, semi-final year, they can still bring them back. And then put, deploy all these people. That is one. Two, look at what is happening in Senegal. Because we are following this is all over the world. Look at what is happening in Senegal. Yeah. I'm so much interested in what is happening in Africa. How Africa can emerge from this uh, 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 pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. They, have, they have manufactured their own equipment. That of which, when they want to test you, is no more than one dollar. But it's still free. One dollar. Then to treat is less than five dollars. Okay? So why can't we borrow from such people? So that we can then also look at uh, Ghana. Look at Ghana. They transported all these things through uh, drone. Through drones. Do you understand? So even if they are testing you in somewhere like Kalagole, whereby they don't have uh, this whatever there, they can easily transfer it through drone. To, to Lagos and all that. Now, leaving, leaving that again, when you're now talking about the spread, the spread of this sin, my brother, this sin has gotten to the neighborhood. Right, so we have to, we yes. have to, by all means, see how we can quickly 
withdraw this sin out of the neighborhood. All right. If not, it, um, it's going to Mr. be too dangerous. Mr. Francis, just before we let you go in quickly, if you will. Now, as a president of the, Ni the National uh, Nigerian Medical Association, I want to ask you, by way of research, uh, what is going on currently? Thank you. That is an answer that uh, we believe that the government has uh, done very poorly. Uh, everybody talks about research, and I can tell you research is not cheap. Uh, in same climate where they have value on research, they will have voted some conspicuous amount of money for researchers. We have never had the government saying that this is what they want to do uh, to support anybody who wants to research on uh, COVID-19, and that is the unfortunate thing. Sometimes ago, I was on air and I told the whole world that if we want to do the research, our best hands, our best brain in medical profession and in science-based prof uh, uh, profession are in the universities. And many of them were on strike. And the government, because of the industrial dispute, were not paying them for up to two months then. We thank them that they have uh, uh, found a way of supporting and giving them two months salary. These are the set of people you want to quickly uh, bring them together ask them to do uh, some research and give them enough uh, incentive so that they can work on it. Unfortunately, if anybody is doing research on COVID-19 in Nigeria, it must be from his own personal post, or he may have one grant from people outside this country. So Nigeria needs to put his mouth, to put his money where his mouth is. Mr. And Mr. this is yeah, one Mr. of the clarion call we must ask the government to urgently do. Thank you, Mr. Francis. That's all we can take with you tonight. Thank you for joining us on Plus Politics, the Nigerian Medical Association President, Mr. Francis Fadjuyile. Thank you very much. But, but, Thank you very much. My pleasure. There, yes. even in, in just one minute, please, yes. Even despite the fact that university lecturers are on strike, some of them are still working to see to the end of this uh, COVID-19. They, they have been coming up with different types of leaves different type of drugs that can be used, of which, I mean, they are, they are in the clinicals now for tests. Mr. Dio Kayo, the political technocrat, thank you for your time. And for the segment, you'll be still with us on the second segment. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we'll be done, in an act of vengeance, our lawmakers are trying to send Chinese nationals back to their country. Stay with us.